I guess want to better myself um, and I'm on a, a journey to better myself uh, both personally and professionally um, so I mean I'm doing okay but I'm always learning um, and I think I'd sent through some stuff because we, we sell quite a technical solution um, and what I find is um, you, you get quite tongue-tied and um, yeah, just trying to, I'm really trying to get through to these people um, and, and kind of with crisp messaging and I guess need creation, I think is a, is a problem um, and some of the kind of objection handling and stuff. So I thought we might be able to help. How's it been going so far? So, yeah, I mean, I guess in terms of what my, my numbers are, I mean, I, I, I do hit my numbers, but I, I feel like we can always do better. That's, that's the thing. Um, and I, I just, I feel like I'm, I'm being challenged slightly more now. I, I don't know why. <laughs> um, what do you mean? Um, uh, yeah, slightly, it, it's just becoming a bit more challenging. I don't know. It, it's strange. It's, um, I don't know um, what that is, but um, maybe my messaging isn't getting across or resonating perhaps um, quite as much. Um, so yeah, I, I'm. I, I feel like I'm struggling a bit more now. I don't know why. Um, so, right. are there any specific questions you'd like to get some my take on, or anything you'd like to discuss today that I hopefully can help you with? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, firstly, thank you. <laughs> it came in the mail, so uh, that's really positive. And. Uh, I am. I have. Uh, I have got the um, the badass B two B thing. I've. I've just. I've. Uh, although it says I'm three percent complete, I have kind of looked at little nuggets of it. But I really do need to spend time going through it, and that's really a focus for me. I think this year. I think last year I was. My head was elsewhere, both personally, and then that also has an effect on you professionally. I think so. Um, but um, so. I don't know if you had to look at what Denodo does. <laughs> I don't know if you probably not had a chance. Well, data I don't really, honestly, I don't really care what you do and nor do no. your prospects. No. To be honest exactly. with you. So let's actually start at a different place. Yes. So I want to tell you a little story. Take about two minutes. And then we're going to go through a little activity. Yeah. And it's going to be a little, it's going to be a little test for you. So here's the question that I have for you. Then I'm going to tell you a little story. Uh, let's pick any company that you want to sell to mm -hmm. and any person within that company that you want to sell to. And I want you to tell me how you make that person happier. And I want you to tell it to me like I'm 10 years old. Do you want me to give you the example? Sure. Yeah. Um, so uh, let's just say a bank, uh, Lloyd's Bank, um, and yes, yeah, so I guess a data architect, but I guess that doesn't really uh, matter too much. Um, and so, um, just to what was the question again? Sorry, just to yeah. So tell me. I make you happy. Yeah. Make, yeah. Give me one account, one person in that account, mm -hmm. and how you make them happier. And tell me a little bit about that from the perspective of if I was 10 years old. Mm. It's difficult. <laughs> um, I guess what we're trying to understand is how these people deliver data to their end users. Okay, I want to stop you for a second. Yeah. Because we're already off track. Yeah. So, uh, what sure. makes you what makes you happier? You personally. Mm. Um, <laughs> it's a good question. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, I guess the learning. So yeah, this learning is is important to me. What does learning help you do better? Get better at what I do and, and be more 
I guess, be happy. Well, how does getting better at what you do make you happier? It's mm. a good question. Uh, because yeah, you yeah, because you've well, you've you've learned something, so that's that's a positive thing. That's going to have a positive impact. In what way? Like you've learned things before. What have what has learning things allowed you to do? That's made you happier. Perhaps opened up new avenues. Like what? To meet new people. How does meeting new people make you happier? Because you, yeah, you, I guess you get, you get a sense of, I guess, fulfillment from, uh, you know, uh, those sorts of people. Um, maybe that they're new, new in your life and have new, new ideas. And those new ideas help you do what? <laughs> get better. <laughs> yeah, get better at what? Being you, <laughs> of a better version of you, I guess. Isn't yeah. So making people happier is not about anything to do with data. So the first problem you have, and I can tell it's a problem, is that you don't know who you're selling to, specifically what would make them happier. Because the only time people want to talk to you is if you have an idea that can make them happier. And data doesn't make me happier. Do people buy braces? Well, they do, but it's not, not because it's because of a reason. What do people buy when they buy braces? Oh, it's there for their, for their teeth, I guess, to, um, yeah. Um, to, to, well, it's, for, it's to rectify a problem. What problem? <laughs> that their teeth are not aligned. And what happens when they're aligned? They can smile. <laughs> and what happens when they smile? How does that make them feel? It makes them feel good. So they don't buy braces, they buy what? You just said it. That better, yeah, them smiling. <laughs> they yeah. buy a smile, they don't buy they braces. Buy yeah. Because when I smile and I'm more confident, if I'm single, I can go to a bar and pick up guys or girls. Mm -hmm. My relationships improve. So your prospects are not buying data. That would be like saying people are buying braces. So your only step right now mm -hmm. that you should be focusing on, and it's in the first part of the Badass B2B Growth Guide, is gaining a better understanding by talking to customers that bought your product. What was their life like before the braces? And why did that suck to have crooked teeth? And what's their life like now after having braces? And I want you to talk to three or four customers. What was life like before braces? And why did it suck? Because in order for someone to put braces on, it has to suck a lot. Because braces, my friend, are expensive, they hurt, and they are on your teeth for a long time. And they're really difficult to take care of. And you got to go to the orthodontist all the time, every time a wire breaks. So the, the pain threshold has to be pretty big for me to put braces on my teeth. Yeah. Because little problems don't get solved. If I had one little crooked tooth and it was in the back and I never noticed it, do you think I'm getting braces? No. No. Your, your prospects are the same way. Mm -hmm. So that's your only assignment. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've, I've, I mean, I've, I've tried, I guess I maybe haven't, dug deep enough uh because you haven't because i could tell by the way i'm talking by the way you're talking yeah, yeah exactly yeah yeah that's the tell that's the test yeah. so <laughs> when you when you do this right mm -hmm. and this is what it sounds like there's a person in a kitchen and she loves french fries so she tries to make them in the kitchen for her family and she's using an eight inch knife and she's got the potatoes out and she's cutting the potatoes with the knife. Occasionally she nicks her fingers. The kitchen is a mess full of stuff. The fries are different shapes and sizes. 
it takes her an hour and 45 minutes to get the potatoes into the right shape. When she puts them in the oven, because they're different sizes, they don't even cook the same way. So when they come out, they're not even crispy. And when she serves them to her family, they don't even eat them. She ends up throwing half of them in the garbage can. It makes her feel like she's a terrible cook and that she's disappointing her family because her kids are not happy. That's what it sounds like when you understand what life was like before the potato peeler 3000. Before I had braces, I couldn't leave the house. I couldn't even look at myself in the mirror. I tried at first to not really smile a lot or show my teeth when I ate. I would put my hand you know, over my mouth. But it was ruining my friendships and it was ruining my relationships. And I got to the point where I, I just wasn't socializing with people. And I started feeling very self-conscious and my confidence started to go down so much so that I couldn't really start to do the things that I wanted to do with my life. And it was affecting my work as well. A lot of my colleagues would go out at night and because I wasn't going out, I wasn't forging the strong relationships with my peers and I wasn't able to even progress in the organization. At first I tried some stuff into the store. I tried these little retainers that you put in to try to move the teeth a little bit, but those didn't really work too much. You see how different that is than data, what you said? Yeah. So you got to really understand at what I call a detail, they're a crispy level. What's going on with the old way? What was going on with the old way specifically? Because the way they're talking about it, you're going to use in your messaging. We'll spend some time and in the, in the Badass B2B Growth Guide, there's a thing called the Jobs To Be Done Interview Guide. Use that to be able to understand the journey people went through before they bought your product because nobody wakes up one day and decides they're going to buy your product. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. I, I guess I, I, could, I could maybe talk a little bit, but maybe not quite as crisp as, as you've talked about. And you got it, then, you, then you're not ready to talk. Yeah. Because that's the foundation of which the house is built. And a lot of people gloss over that and therefore never get the response rates they could get. Mm -hmm. 